All over New Zealand, a passionate group of women are generously giving their time to rescue, rehabilitate and release sick, orphaned and injured birds. One of the things I would have to say for any of the volunteers, no matter who they're working for, who are working and giving their time and their effort, they need a medal. The standard three-bedroom house in Rothsay Bay is home to one of Auckland's most admired bird rescuers. Sylvia Durant, a former nurse, has been rehabilitating birds for over 20 years. I was at home, so I thought, oh, well, I can look after baby birds, so that's what I did. And then uh, gradually I got more and more and more, and then over the years my husband's died, all the other ladies have given up or shifted away, or something, and I'm the only one left on the North Shore. <laughs> that's sort of how it's come about. It's 8.30 in the morning and the flow of feathered patients to Sylvia's front door has already begun. One of Jessie's pet ducks has recently had ducklings. When one of the ducklings turned up with a severed foot, she rescued all three from danger. He had his foot hanging off when I found him. Unfortunately, yeah. the poo geckos have been busy. Yeah. That's what they do. If they stray past where their territory is, they just grab hold of them and flick and chuck them away and say, get out of, get out of my place. Oh, right. It's really terrible. OK, so let's have a look yeah. at your little, little foot. So his foot's gone, but the way the leg's out like that, I'm wondering if perhaps he's also got a broken something. His leg's broken up here as well, so when he's grabbed him, he's given him a shake. Can you feel it? It's a little green stick fracture. Well, I first found out about Sylvia when I found a nestling on the ground in the barn. It was a little baby, naked baby starling. I didn't know what to do with it or how to feed it or anything. And um, so I rang up the SPCA and they put me in touch with Sylvia. And she was just straight onto it and told me exactly what to get, where to put it, exactly how long it was going to take. For a duckling, he likes to get in the water. So I've got to give him a, a splint that is waterproof. And what better than a plastic ice cream cut? And we want to bend it, so we're going to do a little cut. She's been doing it for a very long time. Mm -hmm. She's just got an immense amount of knowledge. This duckling has a real chance at survival because the injury was sustained below the knee. If it's above the knee, then it puts them sideways like that and they, they're going to scrabble along on their belly for the rest of their life, and you don't want that. They usually bring them to me, and, and if I think that that's not viable, well, then I will put them to sleep. In a week or two, you'll be able to let him go with that stump. It'll be, it'll be hard enough. When he's bigger, he'll be able to cope on, the, on our pond? Yeah, a long time ago, I had a little penguin that had a full flipper on one side and half a flipper on the other. And when I took him down to the beach to swim, I didn't have to teach him. He very quickly worked out for himself. He, his good flipper went at this speed yeah. and his half a flipper went at twice the speed and he went in a straight line. So birds work it out pretty quick, OK? On a lifestyle block in Whitford, Manurewa, is Whitford Bird Rescue, run by Mandy Robertson. I run a bird rescue centre here. We've recently formed a trust and it's called the Wild Bird Care Charitable Trust. The trust aims to support the Whitford Centre as well as other groups and organisations which support New Zealand wildlife and birds. We're in the perfect location here. We've got it on a small lifestyle block. It allows me to rehabilitate birds and if they're young, we release them. Where do you get all your birds from? It's mainly members of the public. Uh, but I have had um, ARC rangers bringing me birds, dock rangers and the SPCA. I think like most of the bird rescue people, it all starts with a bird. Mine started with a, a scorp. My husband brought home from work and had a broken wing and I uh, haven't looked back since. The numbers are increasing every year. Oh, this is Pook. She's been with me now from a baby chick. Um, got a really strong beak. She was the only one that, that imprinted and sees me as, as family. She's not as tame as some of I've, I've had, um, but for as long as somebody's walking around the garden, she'll follow them in the hope of getting a hand out. The, the two he's in here, there's two. One is in not very good condition. He was attacked by a cat. You'll see the difference between the two. Uh, he's his only proper use of one foot and he keeps falling into his food when he's feeding because he can't perch properly, so he's a little bit of a mess. And the other one in here, he's due for release shortly, uh, in beautiful condition. This is our little humble hospital. It's normally busier than this during the sort of spring and summer months, but being winter, um, 
the hospital is quiet. Most of the birds are out in the aviary. This is a young mallard duck. It's a juvenile. But he was brought in to me the other day, unable to walk. Today he's actually standing and his tail is up. His tail, when he came in, was dragging. He's made a very quick recovery, which is great. It's what we like, it's a quick turnaround. I used to work part-time and then that scaled down um, from four days a week to three days to two days and then I stopped working completely. And it's not surprising, considering the huge amount of birds Mandy has to care for. This is our, our duck mash. The base is chick starter and it's got uh, whole grain bread, calcium powder, peas and corn, cat biscuits, cat jelly meat, all that good stuff. Jessie's picked up a few ducky diet tips from Sylvia. Sylvia told us to give them peas. We've been giving them peas and bits of uh, lettuce as well, and they just go mad for it. Little Monica here, with her little lack of foot. She's actually the most adventurous of them all in the water. She's not noticeably lopsided in the water, which is great. She's already learned to stand up, and she's working on walking better. They love it. This lifestyle block in West Auckland is where Lynn and her team of volunteers work to rehabilitate injured birds. Lynn's dedication inspired a generous bequest to New Zealand Bird Rescue. This is a property that was left by Jocelyn Bracken. We've got great dreams for it and we've got the task of turning it into a bird rescue facility. So what started you? I had children and I was a single mother back then and I was on DPB and I felt like um, with DPB, you weren't, you were taking from the community and you weren't sort of giving back. Since volunteering for the original bird rescue over 20 years ago, Lynn has never ceased to stop helping members of the community who have sick or injured birds. Thank you. As a group of um, people, we, we take the phone call through the SPCA, the switchboard switches them through to us. Lynn learnt most of her bird rehabilitation skills over the phone. Because there's an awful lot that you just learn over the years and it's really hard to pass that on because you just know it and, and you don't even know that you're doing it for a reason. Working in Mount Albert Veterinary Clinic is Berend Westerer. Beren specialises in small animal veterinary care but also has had over 20 years experience with working with birds. This is Tardy and Tardy's got a broken leg and we've just splintered it and, and we're to take the splint off today to see whether it's healed and we'll probably x-ray it. I've been doing lots of bird work for at least 20 years and as a result um, mainly of Lynn coming to me with all her injured wild birds and she didn't have money to pay for them so uh, we would work out a system where she didn't pay very much at all. We try different things and she's the one that does all the hands-on work. Lynn has asked Beren to call in and look over an injured petrel that was brought over by a member of the public. He had some damage to his feet, is that right? Yeah, on the bottom of his feet, we seem to have got um, very slight reappearance. This thing wasn't waterproof when it came in. Okay. It picked up slightly, but it's um, dropped back and. <coughs> So He's not on um, antibiotics anymore, is he? He is. She's a very, very practical woman, so if I give some treatment and it doesn't work, she'll tell me. Um, and she's also very direct, um, so I get to know if I've missed something. Can I see a lice here? There's yeah. lice. Yeah, there is lice. A treat for lice. If we've got sufficient money and it's sufficiently important, like if it's an endangered bird or whatever, we, we do do blood tests. The whole thing runs on um, availability of money and, and of course they're, it's in short supply. Usually we do pretty well with these and we manage to release them, what, they usually take about a month to yeah. come right yeah. and then we manage to release them off the top of Lion Rock or some such place um, because they can't take off from the ground, they need to have an elevation to take off. People drop their birds off and don't realise that each bird costs about $50 to sort of actually treat. You know, you send bloods off to a lab and it's $100, $150, $200 easily. They're passionate people who care about these animals and it doesn't matter whether they're native or non-native, um, they need help and they're going to give it to them. 